They have keep that. Welcome back, everyone, to the Delta Center. The Kansas City Blades, the top team in the Western Division, they lead the Salt Lake Golden Eagles by a score of 5-1. to one. I'm Mike Barak alongside Randy Busick. And, Randy, uh, the Blades increased their lead by 2 at the end of 40 minutes of play, and they outshot Salt Lake 13-8. to eight. Well, they played an outstanding period again, Mike. Uh, they really forced the puck in a neutral zone, came away with a couple of big goals, and now the Golden Eagles are in a really big hole. Well, the Eagles have found themselves down 4-1, to one, and it was a long goal by Gord Franti to give them that to four to one lead. Just a quick little head man pass up to front. He steps across the blue line and he finds a short side against Mazzotti. A quick little whipper and that's all it took for the uh, Kansas City Blades to go up four to one. It uh, deflected over for the Kansas City team and then on a rebound, J.F. Quintin, former Kalamazoo wing. Well, Quintin is left all alone, camped out in front. He's able to get that rebound and throw it in past Mazzotti and after that goal, that was the last time we saw Jason Mazzotti. Bobby Francis chose to put in Scott Sharples. Yeah, Scott Sharples came in, did not yield a goal and from there, it's uh, still a 5-1 to one game. And take a look at the Paw Computer scoring summary, and we see Franny and Quintin as the uh, top affiliate for the San Jose Sharks. The Blades scoring two more. Well, they're doing an excellent job right now. They've had three unanswered goals. The Golden Eagles' backs are definitely up against the wall, but, hey, they came back on Wednesday night. There's uh, 20 full minutes to go here. You never know what's how stranger things have happened, so uh, quite possibly the big key is, though, to get a goal early, get some momentum going, and you never know. Some things may happen. You talked about opening up. Uh, Eagles need to throw caution to the wind at this point? No. Uh, well, hey, they have to go for it. They're down by five. You're up against a team with 50 wins in the league. They're a proven winner. They're a very good club. You have to open up and go for it. And uh, sometimes when you do that, you put yourself in a situation where you're going to find yourself a lot of two-on-ones, three-on-twos. But then again, you may get a couple of goals out of it and uh, get yourself back in a hockey game. Well, there you hear it. A 5-1 to one Kansas City lead at the end of 40 minutes of play. When we come back, a chance to take a look at the U.S. Olympian C.J. Young and the Canadian Olympian Kevin Dahl. Five to one blades after two and we'll come back with more in just a moment. Welcome back to Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. We're between periods of Salt Lake Golden Eagles against the Kansas City Blades, and it's my pleasure to introduce a couple of the newest Golden Eagles. One played for Salt Lake last year and another newcomer, and both uh, had great experiences uh, this winter in Albertville, France, as part of the respective Olympic teams. We have C.J. Young, who played for the U.S. team. We have Kevin Dahl, who played for the Canadian silver medal team. And first of all, C.J., uh, my gosh, uh, a tremendous role for the U.S. team, a uh, great victory. Uh, you didn't get a medal, but it sure was exciting. Oh, it was. It was a thrill of a lifetime. It's probably the, one of the best experiences in hockey I've had in a long time. Uh, to be able to play for your country in that type of an environment, um, you know, I, I think that the uh, the Olympics are the pinnacle of all sports. And um, you know, to go over there and to to do relatively well you know, with fourth place finish for us was uh, you know, considered a you know pretty moral victory, pretty much. I and mean, we uh, we really didn't know what to expect going into it. And um, you know, we came out of it with uh, with a fourth place finish and a great experience for everybody involved. CJ, uh, the team was on a roll. Like we gained uh, victory and uh, another one, and Ray LeBlanc was playing tremendous in goal. Uh, what was that like for you? Oh, I mean, it was uh, it was really an emotional high for all of us. I mean, things seemed to start to click for us as we, we started to play. We started to gain our confidence a little bit, and um, you know, we, we thought that we were going to do exceptionally well. We did well, um, but I think we were a little bit disappointed in, in the way we finished up. Uh, we lost our last two games, and uh, those were really where the hardware was won, and we didn't come away with anything. But I think everybody elevated their play. I think Ray was one of the, you know, one of the key factors, and um, you know, I think everybody else uh, also upped their game to the point, uh, you know, where we could come away with a fourth place finish. You scored a couple of goals. I know uh, one against uh, the Italy team in a in a big third period. Yeah, I mean, that was a that was probably the the biggest thrill that I've had in the Olympics. Uh, we were down three to two after two, and our line came out and played exceptionally well. Had three goals in the third period. And, um, I think that was one of the things that I'll take away from the Olympic Games, you know, especially the first game that you play. There's a lot of ang anxiety and uh, nervousness surrounding it. And uh, to be able to pull off a win, um, you know, down after two periods, uh, that, you know, that was an accomplishment for us and something I'll, I'll remember for a long time. We're also with Kevin Dahl, who is uh, with the Canadian uh, silver medal team. And Kevin, uh, what was the experience like for you? That was definitely uh, the highlight of my career so far. Uh, played in the minors last year, a little disappointing. And got the chance to play for Dave King this year and I was pretty excited uh, really long year a lot of hard work went into the year a lot of travel as CJ knows and uh, 
we're just glad we got to the Olympics and we played the way we could. We knew we were a good team, but we, you know we just had to put it together, like CJ said. Everyone, you know, was ready to play, but you know the first game there against France, everyone was a little nervous, and it showed, you know, with a tight 3-2 win. But you, you came up uh, with the silver medal. Uh, you gained some wins, got on a roll also, and your only loss came uh, against the unified team, and they captured the gold medal. Uh, a very emotional game as well. Yeah. The unified team's the only team that beat us in 1992. Uh, we had a tough time with them. They were a very good team. Uh, you know, obviously they had some youth and they had some real experience with Baikov and Komatov. Those players can really play. Uh, we just needed a break in that last game. You know, 0-0 zero, zero going into the third. Uh, they got a pretty lucky bounce off the backboards. A sh shot that was wide come right out to a player stick in the net. And uh, we kind of needed that bounce to win the game. As we hung tough with them, uh, our goaltending was good, so was theirs. But uh, we just needed that one break to get it, you know, ourselves going. Well, uh, the two guys here, uh, CJ to my right and Kevin to my left, they had a lot of exhibitions between each other, between the Canadian team and the U.S. team. And uh, you went against Kevin a few times, huh? Yeah, quite a few. I think we played 15 games between the two of us. Uh, I think our the U.S. record was 3-9 and 3, so we didn't show a lot of uh, a lot of wins on our record. But uh, you know, I think that's a credit to the program that Canada had and the team that they had because they had an exceptional team and did real well. And you had to go against CJ. What was that like? Uh, the U.S. team was a very pesky team. You know, they worked hard, that was for sure, and they were really emotional. You know, it didn't matter where the game was, Albany, New York, or Detroit, or in the middle of nowhere in Camelton, New Brunswick. Uh, they played hard, and they came to win. And, uh, you know, we never had an easy game, even though we had a good record. Every game was, you know, a one-goal game, a hard-fought game. All right, now uh, Golden Eagles uh, for the rest of the season. I know it's a very uh, tight race here down the stretch. Yeah, it's very important in the last seven games here to, to solidify our eighth place playoff spot. Uh, you know, last last game on Wednesday against Kansas City, we played well. Uh, got, I think, an emotional win. And, uh, you know, I can tell that the, the attitude in the locker room was a lot stronger. And hopefully we can we'll keep it going. If we can put a streak together, then solidify our playoff spot and go in hoping to play Kansas City in the first round and, and knock them off. All right, there you hear it. Uh, C.J. Young, uh, Kevin Dahl, uh, Golden Eagles uh, for the rest of the season and uh, hoping uh, to help Salt Lake down the stretch. We'll have more Eagles hockey, the Eagles in Kansas City, in just a moment. Mike Barrack alongside Randy Busick here at the Delta Center, Kansas City leading by a score of 5-1. to one. Well, the Eagles had a tough time of it in the first period. They were down 3-1, to one, and now the Blades, who have the... 50 win season, town home two in the second, and it's going to be an uphill battle in this third period. Well, I'll tell you, I'm sure that the Kansas City Blades aren't really going to try and force the issue and make things pretty. They're just going to get that punk, get over to center of the ice zone, throw it deep into the Eagles zone, and uh, probably cruise on to victory unless the Eagles can have, come up with some kind of heroics here in the, th in the third period. The uh, Blades in the uh, second period out shooting so like 13 to 8. And the Golden Eagles have a total of 13 shots on goal all night long. And that's not enough against a world-class goaltender like Arthur Irbe. Well, definitely not, Mike. Uh, we talked about this uh, early in the hockey game. They definitely had to get that puck in deep and uh, get a lot of shots against Irbe. And they haven't been able to do that in this hockey game. And that's why they find themselves in the hole that they're in right now. Well, the Eagles uh, have only won five games all season long when trailing through a total of uh, 40 minutes of play. But one of those games, Randy, coming uh, Wednesday night right here against Kansas City. So the Eagles have shown that they can do it. But, wow, five goals to win it, four to tie it. And right now, as you mentioned, just take it one at a time. If they can get one early, just go from there. Well, you know, uh, when you're in your own barn, you're being outshot 24 to 13. That's bad enough. But when you look up at the scoreboard and you see your team down by uh, four goals going into the final period, that really makes a, a hard pill to swallow, Mike. The Golden Eagles really have to come out and save some face here in the third period. They have to play against the Kansas City Blades again next week, so they want to make sure, uh, if not anything, just to get uh, back within, uh, make things a little more respectable so that uh, the Kansas City Blades know that they're going to be in for a fight next Tuesday. What makes them so successful? 50-22-3, and three. is there any one thing you can say that uh, has made this team so successful this year? Well, when a team has 50 wins, Mike, there's just not one thing that's going right for them. They've got a whole combination of things that they're very good at. First of all, you can start with a goaltending, go, go all the way up from there to the forward line. They've got some of the best goaltenders in the league. Their defensemen are big, tough, and strong, but they've got forwards that are willing to forecheck 
and back check, and that helps out the defense and the goaltenders because you very rarely see the Kansas City Blades outnumbered as the uh, opposing team enters their zone. It's always an even three on three, two on two, or whatever. Okay, the Eagles uh, find themselves down here in the third period and look to get one and perhaps go from there. Olsen uh, on left wing for Forslund as the Eagles the maneuver onto their own end. Kevin Evans, however, breaks it up into the neutral zone. He is bumped flying on the right side, and now Churnham has uh, headbands across the line, but Forslund ahead of the play. We talked about earlier, as far as the total standings are concerned, the Eagles coming into the action behind the Kalamazoo wings by a total of uh, six points. Now, Kalamazoo won 9-1 to one tonight against the Fort Wayne Comets, so now it's an eight-point lead over Salt Lake. So again, it looks uh, like the Eagles are going to have to battle with Indianapolis for that final playoff spot. And Kansas City is probably very happy to see that score too because it's Fort Wayne that they're battling uh, with for the overall top position in the league. Yeah, the Hubert Trophy is what they call for the team that finishes first overall in the league. Kansas City, by the way, would have to win all eight, including tonight of their final games, to tie a league record of 58 wins set to, on two occasions in IHL history. Here's the play on left wing and the forward uh, for Kansas City. Kravitz leads it free across the line and on goal is the player in front. And that being the Kansas City player Evans, but uh, Sharples able to catch it and hold on. 44 seconds gone into the third period of play. Next Tuesday, the Eagles and the Blades uh, square off once again as Scott Sharples uh, between the pipes. It will be 7 p.m. at the Delta Center. Only three home games remaining. A uh, game uh, April 2nd against the Phoenix Roadrunners and April 4th right here at the Delta Center against the Kansas City Blades. And you can see uh, fans uh, here at the Delta Center have come out in numbers. However, they've not had a lot to cheer about here this evening. And here's Alexander Gadinian, the first Soviet ever to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Back of his net, able to play it free on the right side and into the neutral zone. Here is Zemlak now moving free deep into the Kansas City zone at offside at the defense. And for a, well, the score here, 5-1 uh, Blades. And uh, we're going to have our Ardell Brown icing call here in just a moment for some of our new hockey fans. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles present the three rules of hockey, the main rules that control the game, as demonstrated by Golden Eagle players Kevin Wortman, Dennis Holland, and Darren Banks, sponsored by Ardell Brown Recreational Vehicles. Rule number three is icing. Icing occurs when the puck is passed into the attacking zone and is touched by a defender after the puck passes beyond the goal line. This results in a faceoff back in the offensive team zone. However, if a similar play is made after the passer has crossed the center line, this is a legal play, even if the puck is touched by a defender first. Oh, for our newer hockey fans, a chance to see the icing uh, play. Always get asked about that. Here's Sandus Olsen in front of center when poked away. Here comes big Darren Banks on his way. A freight train down the left side and shoots off his stick. And it caroms wide. Banks at a slim trim, 215 pounds. Here is the Eagles, uh, Tim Harris now, trying to work it free. Banks now back of the net, trying to center one, pinned up by Olsenich, and they freeze it now back of the net for the moment, and finally they succeed with a minute 57 gone into the second period, and, or into the third period, with Kansas City leading by four and five to one. Darren Banks, who hails from uh, Windsor, Ontario, played at the famous Brock University, a very unknown uh, school uh, in the Canadian college ranks, and really came out of nowhere, played at the East Coast Hockey League, and all of a sudden playing in the IHL. Brock University, he told me he went to Harvard. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt it. And believe it or not, Brian Pataffi, the Eagles trainer, also hails from Brock. You know, funny story about that. He, uh, he told Bob Francis when he first joined the team that he played for the Badgers. And he said, you played for Wisconsin? And he said, no, I played in Brock. Here's the play <laughs> to the side of the goal, and Kevin Dahl plays the puck back of the goal. The Brock Badgers uh, in the Canadian College ranks. Brian Douglas, our producer, all over me about that story. Here's Gord Fani in the center, and he flips it right back into the Salt Lake zone. Hey, it's 5-1. What do you want? Here's the play on the right side, and the Eagles Harris able to play at the center, and Carter into the neutral zone, winds it right back in. Olsen and Dahl on defense. Harris, Hafey, and Cruz is the trike up front. 
And the Eagles Olsen just the pounds it to the blue line. And Kansas City take over in the center. And Troy Frederick backs it right back into the Salt Lake zone. And Sharple sets it up for Kevin Guy back of the goal. Not much happening early on in this period. Well, I sort of suspected that the uh, Kansas City Blades weren't going to do anything fancy. Just try and keep the Golden Eagles bottled up and uh, keep dumping that puck down deep on Sharples. As you mentioned earlier, there are always three players back into the neutral zone, not allowing the Eagles to creatively move up the ice. Here's a chance for Olsenich, a flip shot, and a blocker saved by Sharples, and the defenseman Gadinyuk able to break uh, free to center. Alexander Gadinyuk. Made in two World Junior Championships, works in and centers one. Clark couldn't get a stick on it at the right point. Guy floats it right back on the opposite side, and the Eagles trying to work it free. Young now for Melrose, it's tip free for Kravitz on the right side, and a break for Kansas City as Lassard, and it looks like Gadinyuk are going to go. Gadinyuk flails away with his right hand, and Lassard trying to fight back, but he's underneath. And number 93, Alexander Gadinyuk makes his presence felt for Salt Lake against the former Golden Eagle, Rick Lassay. Well, not very often, Mike, you see a Russian drop his gloves, but Gadinyuk very upset on that play. Uh, drops it with Rick Lassard, another big customer there, and a uh, couple of good punches thrown by Gadinyuk. It looks like he probably got the better of that one. Well, Gadinyuk uh, skates to the penalty box, so does Lassard. The score here, 3.28 gone, third period. 5-1 Kansas City. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. This guy is too much. Oh, shit. This is great. I'm going to even mention where Brock is from. St. Catharines, Ontario. <laughs> Alexander Gadinyak picks up the extra penalty for Salt Lake, and that's a key one, Randy. Five each for fighting. Gadinyak in the side, time of the penalty, 328, but a power play coming up for Kansas City. Well, if uh, the Blades are successful in this power play, I think it would be a uh, pretty well sealed and done deal. Faceoff will come outside the blue line, the fifth power play for the Kansas City Blades. And the side is not too often at the bottom of the pile. Well, I'll tell you, he's a, he's a big guy. Uh, here, there you see the power play already, one for four tonight. The Golden Eagles haven't done that bad of a job killing penalties. But uh, then again, now they're in the fifth power play opportunity for the uh, Kansas City Blades. That's quite a bit for a hockey game. There. Here is Colstead now at his own defense, able to leave it free. Kansas City's uh, Dwayne Joyce takes over. Here is Joyce slowly out of his own end. Left wing pass for Colstead. Leads it free across the line and a break for the Blades. Trying to work it in front, they score. And it was a deflection on a shot from inside the blue line. And Sharples went down and the puck went uh, upstairs. And it didn't take long. 3.48 gone, third period, 6-1 Blades. Well, I think Sharples was a victim of Daryl Olsen here. Here's Courtney gets the puck. He throws it over to his winger, but Olsen touches it right there. Never gets to Lappin, but it goes high over top of Sharples, although Olsen was the one that put it in. Credit Courtney with the goal. And the Blades lead by five. It's a power play goal, their second of the game. 20 seconds into the penalty. Well, it didn't take long, six to one. Four unanswered goals right now. Oh, now things aren't looking very good, are they? Not too good here. It reminds me of the opening night here at the Delta Center, the home ice game against the Peoria Rivermen. And the Eagles break back to center. Hafey able to work it right back in. And the uh, Blades uh, clear it to center. Ed Courtney, as we talked about, it's 11th of the year, 6-1 to one Kansas City. And Salt Lake's Workman headmans into the neutral zone. And Harris leaves it to free on the right wing side. And the Eagles control the puck where Dahl on the wing for Cruz. Here's Cruz to center. Cranks it right back into the blade zone. And Air Bay himself gingerly uh, sets it up for his own defense. And Joyce on the right side. Headmans for Gord Fronty. He flips it right back in. Kevin Guy has to go back for Salt Lake. Right side for Banks. He's able to burst to center. Here's Banks for Salt Lake with the Eagles' uh, Zemlak. Banks moving in on goal. Stuffs it in front but couldn't get a shot on at the point. Melrose to Guy closing in. A little looper and it goes over top of the net. Eagles trying to center one. Banks unable to gain possession. Zemlak and Olsenich collide. Playback of the goal. Frederick leaves it free. 
the Kansas City Blades up six to one. And the Eagles, Kevin Guy, spanks it right back in and Ear Bay the save, but it's offside anyway at the defense with 5.08 gone, third period, and the Blades have increased their lead by five at six to one. And now that uh, at the Eagles players bench, it's gotta be one of those situations where holy cow, everything uh, that's deflected, everything they go on uh, goal uh, is gonna go in. Well, there's not too many uh, great things that you can really say about tonight's game so far, the way it's gone, but uh, you got 14 minutes to go. You've got more games to play this weekend coming up, and that's where really what you're playing for now. This one's over with, uh, let's face it, down five goals against the best team in the league with only 15 minutes to go in the game. But you want to generate some kind of momentum to carry yourself in through the weekend. They've got a lot of big hockey games to go, and they're definitely not out of the playoff picture yet. And uh, Kevin Dahl back after the icing is the call, so we'll face it back again. And, you know, uh, these two teams, if the Eagles can uh, secure that playoff spot, would meet in the first round of the playoffs. So that uh, feeling on uh, the Eagles got the other night that they can beat this club, but next week's game, very, very important. That's right. It's a big boost uh, knowing that at least you can compete with a club that uh, plays at the, uh, the level they are. But the Eagles really have to step up a little bit more and, uh, you know, generate a lot more offense against this club play a little bit smarter, get that puck deep, and really fight through all the uh, offense and holding that the Kansas City uh, Blades of forwards put up. Yeah, they do a nice job of offering interference in the center ice area, and Emmons able to flip it right back in. And the play back of the goal where Dahl plays for so like 14-24 left, third period, 6-1 to one Kansas City, and the Eagles bounce it right back in. Back at his own his, uh, defense is 26-year-old Dwayne Joyce. Eagles break it up. Young centers in front of the goal. And with Clark barreling in front, the save is made by Irvine. Clark doesn't like that little Gary Emmons was right there in the goal crease area. And they are dancing uh, back of the net. And Clark wants to get that right hand free. And here we go with Forslund and Kravitz. Two Europeans. Forslund lands the right hands. Kravitz trying to fight back. He's a little rough, tough customer. And uh, there are two... Uh, scraps going on on the far side. The one with the Clark and Evans now. Kravitz and Forslund. And there's Clark, you can see, with the uh, black eye going against Kevin Evans. He received that in a scrap against Mark Major of Muskegon last week. And now they are on the far side. Evans trying to throw, throw right in. Clark with a pair of left. He continues to flail away. Oh, Evans throws a right hand. Clark winds up with his left and continues to go. How about that? Gary Clark with the left hand. And Evans trying to hold on for dear life. And now the linesman in his separate on the far side. Gary Clark. Little imitation of Evander Hollyfield there. 5.48 gone, third period. 6-1 blades. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Well, if you can't beat them on the scoreboard, uh, beat them when you drop the rights and lefts. And I'll tell you what, Kerry Clark got that left hand free and pounded away for the Golden Eagles. Well, I'll tell you, Mike, uh, quite a bit of frustration settling in right now for the Golden Eagles. Things getting a little bit out of hand and definitely going to see Don Adams clamp down a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, chuck a couple of players out here just to make things a little bit easier, easier on himself. But... Puck comes out in front. Kerry Clark's got a great scoring opportunity, pushing and shoving, trying to get that thing past uh, Irby, whatever he can. And uh, everything sort of starts off from there. Gary, Gary Emmons pushing, and here comes Evans. And that's all it took. There goes the mitts, and here we go. Well, they show Kerry Clark's scrap up on the Jumbotron in fast motion. And, uh, boy, it was uh, quick enough already with those left hands. They speeded it up a little bit, and he continued to flail away. Well, he had a he pretty well uh, was throwing him at will there. He had an open arm, and uh, when you're a fighter skilled in that area, that's exactly what you want to have is one arm free and just be able to uh, start throwing him. But it's one part of the game, uh, a little bit of the physical part of the game, but unfortunately uh, it's not showing up on the scoreboard right now as the blades are up 6-1. to one. With just over uh, 14 minutes to go. Almost 600 minutes in penalties over two seasons for Kerry Clark in an Eagles uniform. He and the player Evans with C5 each for fighting, and we failed to forget Forstman and Kravitz went also. They pick up five minute majors, all at 548. It's not very often you see two Europeans going, uh, and Gadiniak was before that, so uh, things are really getting hot down there in the battlefield. And the Eagles uh, trailing by a five uh, goal count at six to one. The Eagles to Kerry Clark was uh, 
playing with the Phoenix Roadrunners. Not uh, too much of a fan favorite here, but he joins Salt Lake, and they really gave him a rousing uh, round of applause when he circled that uh, finger up in the air after his scrap with Evans. Okay, the Eagles now in this game, outshot 24-13. That was at the start of the period. I don't think they've updated it so far. Here's a chance now deep into the Salt Lake zone. Turnamaz can't squeeze by the defense. Courtney centers, but tipped away. Now to the left for the goal. Blaze trying to work it free. Olsen and Courtney collide. Courtney centers, tipped away to the blue line, and Kansas City's handy. Works in right point for Joyce. Across to the side of the goal, and the shot deflects wide, but another Kansas City player. Handy appears to be shaken up on the far wing with 13.43 left in the third period and he's down and out on the far side well ron handy a very finesse style of player he's got a couple of assists already in tonight's game and there's a goal scorer proven goal scorer he's been around he retired this year came back and what an asset he's been for this kansas city club he was selling cars in indianapolis as well as doing the color on the broadcast and we take a look here at the play to the near side with Joyce gained possession. But well, big Paul Cruz ran him right over like a big truck. No wonder he went down in a heap. Andy down to the far side. Uh, he was uh, doing what you are doing right now. He was on the color on the Indianapolis Ice broadcast, and then they said, uh, how much uh, would you like to rejoin the Blades here? And uh, he said, yep, and he's done very well. Well, he's an excellent hockey player, and like I said, Mike, a proven goal scorer, and uh, um, any any team he would help out no matter where he went. Last year he led the Blades in scoring as an independent to player and actually even though they're under affiliation at San Jose he's under contract to the Blades themselves. Here's the play to the side of the net and Wortman plays for Salt Lake with 13-20 left in the third period. Eagles have not scored since the 1801 mark of the opening period and that by Richard Zemla. Here's the play into the neutral zone, and the Blades dump it right back in where Kevin Dahl has to go back. Here is the Eagle first-year player, Dahl on left wing, winds it for Banks, able to float it right back for a streaking Dahl, but Olsenich plays to the blue line. Here comes the former Pittsburgh Penguin, Zemlock in front, Harkins a shot, and a stick save, rebound, Harkins a wraparound, and the save made by the goaltender, Irving pinching in for Salt Lake guy at the right point shoots one and that deflects wide but a penalty it looks like a slash in front and let's see what this is all about in front of the goal and it appears perhaps to be going against Salt Lake well Darren Banks heading off towards the the penalty box area is going to get a slashing penalty against him and again the Golden Eagles are going to be in a shorthanded situation a little over 12 minutes to go six to one in a game probably doesn't really matter as far as the score goes now well, the Blades leading 6-1. to one. They're going their sixth power play. They've scored two power play goals. We'll come back with more from the Delta Center. The Eagles down here tonight. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. 442, that's the attendance tonight. 7,442. Banks is slashing penalty at 7-16. And another power play, the sixth for Kansas City. The Eagles have given up 446 man advantage chances this season. Incredible total for the year. Here's the play on left wing and the defenseman Colstead pirouettes at his blue line. Now circles back, counted by Hafey and the Eagles come up with a puck. Here's Kevin Guy, circles behind the net for a center one. Hafey sweeps at it but uh, whiffs and the play at center ice where Guy at uh, the center ice area drops it back. And Olsen plays back of his net, just picks an opening and sails it all the way deep into the blade zone. And Dwayne Joyce circles back for Kansas City. 6-1 Kansas City in the lead as they play it free into the neutral zone. And even though they're on the power play, they're just waiting back in their own end. They're eating up the clock. Here's Quinta on left wing. Uh, hounded by Chernamaz. Leaves it to Joyce at the point. Centers one and tipped away. Now playing the far side. It is Quinta holding on. Circles to get away from Dahl. Drops it back to Emmons along the far hash marks to the point for Joyce. Back to Emmons. Cuts in. Side of the goal. Pass in front. Oh, it's just shot wide by Peter Lappin. Looking for his second goal of the game. And a 16th power play goal this year in Salt Lake clear it down. He was oh close to making it 7-1. Well, you don't want to give Lappin too many chances like that. He's not going to miss on all of them. Here's Quintana wrist shot. And his stick safe Sharples. And the Eagles clear, but not out at the point. Olzenich now gets away from the Eagles. Chernomass, he looks like a fine for the Blades. This number four, Sandus Olzenich, who shoots, and he just missed the net. It bounces off the backboard, but right to Lappin. Centers in the slot. Evans a shot. Stick save, Sharples. 
Pinching in is Joyce now. 13 seconds to go in the penalty. Joyce now yanks it to the side of the goal lap and right point for Joyce. Eagles Banks ready to come back on. Kansas City center one. Lappin turns, spins, trying to make a play. Banks is back on, he shoots. And Sharples gets a piece of that and it to Karams to Young into the Solik zone. Ten and a half minutes left for the game. Eagles down, six to one. Chernomaz and Banks can't squeeze into the uh, Kansas City zone and Carter able to fling it right back in. And the Eagles Wortman on the wing for Kevin Guy. Up the middle for the Eagles Banks. Side steps to check, then lets it fly wide of the target. Bounces off the backboards, right to Wortman, a loose handy. A shot over top of the goal. Break for uh, Salt Lake, but they were unable to get it on the net. Here's the play to the slot. Wortman unable to control, and Kevin Guy has the backpedal for Salt Lake, and when they're getting their chances, they're even missing the net. Well, that's right, Mike. They're walking right into the slot area and uh, firing for the corners, but they're high and wide. Handy now to the neutral zone. Can't squeeze by Richard Zemlak, and the Eagles' Kevin Guy able to whip it off the glass back of the net. In a four-check cruise now for Salt Lake. Heafy trying to fight it to free. Cruz on the right side, unable to gain possession, and finally it's taken by Kansas City. And Colstead leaves it free on left wing. Blades wind it to free into the neutral zone, but Olsen breaks it up. Left wing for Cruz, it's behind him. Shot right back in the center, and the Blades, Olsen, it's across the line. Now moves it on goal, centers one. Kept away by the player Frederick, who was cutting in. Now Salt Lake breaking free into the neutral zone. Heafy whips it behind the goal. 9.08 left in the third period. 6-1 Kansas City and the forward Frederick leaves it free for fun and he flips it right back in. Olsen now, left wing trying for Salt Lake. A lose a check, now breaks to center, swings it right back into the Kansas City zone. Here Bam so plays it. No rose for Salt Lake trying to dig it free. And then it's wound right back into center. Not seen Jeff Medill for the rest of this game. He was knocked out to flying in the first period for the Blade. Here are the Eagles breaking back. Chernomaz moving in. Cuts in the slot. A wrist shot. That carries wide. Young trying to jam it free. And finally, it's cleared by the Blades. Deep into the Salt Lake zone. And Kevin Guy beats the player. And Courtney to the loose puck. Salt Lake play at the center. Chernomaz now into the Blade zone. Snapshot going wide. No rose in for Salt Lake trying to jam it free. Succeeds in the centers for Harkins, but tipped away by Kansas City. And cleared deep into the Salt Lake zone. This should be an icing. Workman back there for icing is called. 8.09 to go, third period. Kansas City leading by five. Six to one is our score. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Todd Harkins, Richard Zemlak, and Darren Banks. The forward line for Salt Lake. On defense, Gadiniak and all. Here's the play to the side of the net into the Kansas City zone. Blades play it into the center ice area, and the Eagles come up with a puck where Dahl leaves it for Gadinia. On the right side for Banks. He can't squeeze by the defense, and it's one right back in. Here's the play on the left wing boards. Frederick trying to center one, does loose in front. Harkins knocks down a Kansas City player, and Banks is able to spin the center. Up wing uh, shot right back deep into the Kansas City zone. And the center, boy, he's leveled by Banks. And the play for Frederick into the center ice area for Lapp and a two line offside as Frederick and now Zemlak have some words. And now they're going to go. Zemlak wastes no time and continues to flail away on Frederick before he even was able to get set. May get an instigation here and he tries to throw a right hand right in front of the Kansas City players bench with Zemlak and the player Frederick who throws a right hand back. He's got a lot of reach on him and he throws with a couple of right hands. He's a 6'5", 226 pounds, but Zemlak fights back with his right. 29-year-old Richard Zemlak from Winters, Saskatchewan and trying to throw a right hand over the shoulder of Frederick. Frederick trying to fight back at the linesman in his set rate. Frederick out of the Western Hockey League. Brandon Wheat Kings, Richard Zemlak also for the Western League. Well, a scrap here. Fans delighted about it. 6-1 Kansas City. And we'll take a break here at the Delta Center. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles Hockey. Well, the Eagles trailing 6-1, Randy Busick. I'm Mike Barak. And 
One thing the Eagle fans have had something to cheer about tonight. You look at the scoreboard and you say, not much, but the Eagles have won their fair share of scraps here tonight. Well, they've uh, they've had gone at it quite a bit here, uh, here tonight, Mike. Uh, Richard Zemlock, the old veteran, dropping the gloves and throwing a few punches there, but hey, uh, you can win the, the battles, but the, the bottom line is they're losing the war here. Six to one right now, down by five, seven and a half minutes to go in a game. I don't know, uh, hopefully, maybe uh, the physical play will give them a boost for the weekend, but it's, it would be nice to see them pot a few goals, too. Seventh power play coming up for Kansas City. The reason for that, Randy, as we suspected, Frederick didn't even have his gloves off before Richard Zemlak said, I want to go with you. Well, not much of a question about uh, Zemlak getting the instigation for that one there, but uh, these two teams both have a couple of big customers uh, in the lineup, and uh, although Wednesday night was fairly quiet, tonight certainly has not been. Here's the play at center ice, and Olsen has to retreat back for Salt Lake, picks an opening, and flies it off the glass deep into the Kansas City zone. Right to Irbay, leaves it for his own defense on the right side for the forward Carter. John Carter on the left wing side for the set. Able to bank it right back behind the goal, and it is Franti for Kansas City, holding on to the puck. Able to yank it free for the player on the near side. Now Carter holds on, cuts to the top of the circle. Hands for Olsen, it's to Carter, cuts in. Plays it to the left of the goal. Plays trying to center one, but tipped away to the blue line. Outside the line now, Olsenich unable to hold on. Now Guy back the other way for Solik. Squeezed off by Olsenich. And the third now back of his net for Kansas City. 6.40 left of the game. 6-1 Blades. Here's Lassard into the neutral zone. Pass broken up at center. Unable to control it as Workman. Then the Blades trying to center one, but tipped away right corner Eagle zone, and Melrose just winds it into center. Handy now for the Blades on the right side for Olsenich. Leads it free to the Salt Lake zone, but not before. Melrose upends the forward Evans. And now Evans now on the right side. Flings it to the left of the goal, and Workman plays for Salt Lake. And just clears the zone. Kansas City leading 3-1 after one, 5-1 after two, and they've scored the only goal here in period three. And that a Courtney tally. Here's the play on the left wing side. Eagles drop it back to the right wing boards and just smack it all the way down. 28 seconds left in the penalty. Well, very obvious that Kansas City is complacent enough just to kill at this clock. Might not waste too much energy. They've got a couple of days here to spend in Salt Lake and enjoy themselves. They did all their work in the first two periods. Here is Kitten twirling around, leaves it for Colstead, able to hold on to the point. Kitten shoots one, that's the deflect one. Now the play back of the net. Eagles trying to jostle it free, and they clear it all the way down deep in the blade zone. That's it on the penalty. Eagles the player Clark, who was serving the minor portion of that penalty, is back on, so the Eagles have killed it off. And Kitten able to uh, swivel into the Salt Lake zone. Hounded by Dahl, and then the side just picks an opening and winds it right back in. I'm sure the fans would enjoy one goal here at least to, to finish this thing off as the Eagles clear it right back in. And the play back of the network, Kansas City's Evans has possession. There is Kevin Evans losing for the moment. Hafey trying to steal. Banks in a fourth check. Here may the save, and it's cleared away in a center ice, and Gadinyuk has to go back. Here is Alexander Gadinyuk. On the left wing side for Hafey, stolen by Emmons, cuts in front, but Gadinyuk parades the slot and leaves it for Hafey as the pass off his back, and he just flips it all the way down. Eagles change on the fly, and uh, the blades in across the line. Evans now sidesteps to check, leaves it for Lappin, shoots in a blocker save made by Sharples, big rebound, Sharples to save another rebound, and he stops that too. He stopped Lappin twice at least. Here's Salt Lake's Melrose now, able to burst to center, but poke check in the neutral zone. Now uh, Olsen intercepts, trying to work into the Kansas City zone, dumps it right back in, and out of the goal air Bay himself to play it on the left wing side. And Kansas City break back in across the line. Franny moving in, shoots one. That deflects uh, wide and actually up into the stands. 4.05 to go, third period, 6-1, Kansas City. Blades have to be pleased about this. Peter Lappin, uh, who has uh, chipped in this evening with uh, a goal for the Kansas City Blades. And he had a couple of great scoring opportunities on the last shift. Uh, Scott Sharple's playing very well since he's uh, joined in. He gets one backhand chance here. He gets his rebound back, another poke at it, and it goes high over top of the net. Two point blank shots. Great saves by Sharples. These two teams will meet again 7 p.m. at the Delta Center Tuesday night. Here's the play at the defense, and Dahl twirls around. Leaves it for Gadinyuk on the right side for Clark. 
at center ice. Cruz now maneuvers into the blade zone. Works against the defensive Colstead. Eagles trying to jostle it free, but it's tipped away on the left wing side. So Lake in a four check, and finally it's worked free on the right side, and Courtney comes up for the puck. Kansas City leading by five at six to one. And the Eagles have not scored, as we talked about, since early in the first period. And the Blades work it free in the center, and the Cruz runs into the forward Courtney, and then flip right back into the Salt Lake zone. Clark was all over Joyce. Jim Wiley, their assistant coach, says Clark should get called. Here's the Ganinik on left wing. In across the line. Works free with Harris, but it's offside. And for the defense with 3.18 left third period. 6-1, Kansas City in the lead. Randy, you've been through a few of these over the years. And uh, what's that like on the bench to have a game like this? Well, it's very disheartening. You look at Bobby Francis, and uh, a lot of things going through his mind right now. He knows that Indianapolis won tonight. The race is a lot closer now for the playoff positions. Uh, Indianapolis has a couple of games in hand. And this team definitely has to prove, uh, play a lot better uh, in coming games if they want to make the postseason play. The Eagles have some tough ones. They play Tuesday against Kansas City. They follow up with a pair of weekend games in San Diego and finish up with three games in as many nights against the Phoenix Roadrunners in a home-and-home -home series and finish off April 4th Fan Appreciation Night here against the Kansas City Blades. Well, uh, I'll tell you, the schedule is certainly uh, not in the favor of the Golden Eagles. They really have a tough go at it for the rest of the season, and uh, they really have to play superb to get into the playoffs. Darren Banks was escorted off to the dressing room as Kevin Guy slams it in. I don't think they announced a penalty. Let's see. Yes, Darren Banks, 10 minute misconduct. He must have had some words for Don Adam. Uh, apparently, he's headed off into the showers a little bit early, so uh, he won't have to see the rest of this. Well, the face off will come outside the blue line, and there you have it. He did have some words with the referee. I think he said perhaps the magic words. Here's the play to the side of the goal in the Kansas City zone. And the Eagles, who trail by five, trying to work it free. And now the back of the goal. Hafey for Solik trying to jostle it free. Hafey now cuts to the top of the circle and whips it to the side of the net. Harris trying to jam it free, and Kansas City break uh, in the neutral zone. Here is Olzenich in the center ice. Second round San Jose pick this summer. Trying to work it free for Ron Handy. Here is uh, Handy in the center ice. Uh, won an Adams Cup championship for the Indianapolis Checkers. Able to work the center and flips it in on the right side. Lapid moving free. That was uh, the league preceding the IHL, the old CHL. Here is Salt Lake back the other way. Werbin moving free. In against Colstead. Centers one, but Young couldn't get his stick on it as he was uh, working in the slot. And Churnaman backs it up behind the goal with 2.12 left in the game. And the Blades keep 10 on the wing for uh, the center ice now to lap and Evans who slams it right back in. And we're getting under the two minute mark here. Blades uh, lead uh, by five. And uh, so they take over on the near wing with a minute 56 left in the third period. 6 1 Kansas City. And oh wow, Paul Cruz ran into Kevin Evans. But I think he made that look a little bit worse as he fell down to his duff. Cruz definitely, I think, gave him a shot in the center ice, but he went down like a cannon. Well, Cruz is uh, definitely going after Evans there. And, uh, Adam saw it, so there's going to be penalties here against the Golden Eagles, but uh, whether it looks like uh, Evans saw him coming, was able to duck, uh, so Evans is enjoying himself out there tonight. Now here is Paul Cruz. Uh, well, Just maybe I'm wrong him. there. He uh, did try and give him a shot there, and he got caught as well <laughs> with a minute 56. He may not have gotten all of them, but he sure got a piece. Well, he was he was definitely trying there. Is that, that e was for the, effort. The clear definition of a glove sandwich right there? He's pretty close, Mike. And uh, one thing about a penalty, you always don't have to. You just have to uh, try to do something uh, uh, to get called for. You don't have to be successful in doing it. He tried to go after Evans. He missed him in doing so, but still draws the penalty, and uh, the Golden Eagles will be in a shorthanded situation again, I'm sure. Well, something strange has been called here at 18.04, a five-minute bench penalty called against Salt Lake, as well as the cruise penalty, a two-minute minor for slashing. Huh. Well, that's going to put the Golden Eagles down two men for the remainder of this game. Five-minute bench minor, is it perhaps that Cruz came off the bench? Uh, yeah, 
Possibly, but that would definitely be bad news for that man right there because uh, that would mean a suspension almost for certain for Paul Cruz. And uh, he is a very important guy in that lineup right now, especially when you, you need the points in the games. There's a team that's uh, pretty tired right now after tonight's contest, but hopefully they can come out again this weekend with a better performance. But they're trying to sort things out. I've never heard really of a, of a five-minute bench major. Uh, they have no penalties flashed on the boards right now. Now, right now, it should be a minor against Cruz and a five-minute major with Salt Lake two men short, but it looks like the Eagles are going to be just one man short, so maybe uh, they're going to change that call the near side. They do not even have the penalty box or any penalties flashed from the boards, Randy, right now. Well, this is, yeah, very, uh, I, I don't know what Don Adams is doing down there. The Tim Harris, who was supposed to serve the penalty, came out. Now they have one penalty up in the boards for two minutes, so maybe that was just a, a missed call by uh, well, yeah, the announcer. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to call over the referee, Adam, because if you call the five-minute bench major, there should be uh, two men short. Salt Lake should be playing with only three skaters right now. Ah, they've changed it now. Maybe they've given Cruz the five-minute major for slashing and a minor penalty. I think maybe a bench minor. That's probably what it is. Anyway, I'm sure the Eagles uh, just like to get this final 156 over with and get this game over with. <laughs> Faceoff will come outside the blue line and the Eagles wind it to center. Well, evidently they've just called the one five-minute major penalty against Cruz for slashing. Time of the penalty, 18.04. Kansas City on their eighth power play, and they'll have this for the rest of the game, whether they score once, twice, or three times. Here's the play to the point for Joyce. Hands it free to the far side for Emmons. Plays it to the side of the net. Kansas City trying to wheel it free. Evans can't get his shot off, and Salt Lake's Chernomaz yanks it for Young on left wing. He works into the Kansas City zone. Now squeezes by one man, a shot. Right on, and a stick save by Irbe. A, a weak wrist shot, and Irbe steers it aside. A nice play by Young to elude the defense. Here's Emmons now. Stick by Harkins into open ice. And the play at center covering up Olzenich into the Salt Lake zone. Poked away in the center. And the side has to go back for Kansas City. That's under a minute to go now in the game. Kansas City leading 6-1. to one. And the Eagles trying to work it free for Harkins at center, but Irbe himself out of the net to play it. On the right side, Olzenich now. 49 seconds left. On the left wing side, Keen 10 into the Salt Lake zone. Guy breaks it up, holds it to center, and the side plays at his own blue line. 39 seconds left as Lassard just plays it right back in. Eagles can ice the puck now. They're shorthanded a man. Here's the play at the point. Holds it into shot. Sharples gloves it with a red shirt in front. Holds on with 29 seconds to go. Kansas City going to take this 6-1 to one right now. The rubber uh, game of the series will be played Tuesday night, 7 p.m. at the Delta Center. Well, and hopefully uh, the Golden Eagles are going to come up with some wins this week weekend to make that a very, very important game. Uh, Randy, no games this weekend. They'll oh, be uh, home Tuesday maybe they night. Should, maybe they should schedule gonna a couple. They're going to be home with this new little youngster here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ace off will be to the left of the Salt Lake goal. 29 seconds to go. Been a big, uh, big day and night for you with the Too long. addition of the Busica clan. Here's the play on the far side, and Lappin holding on to Joyce at the blue line, right point. The start of shot that carries wide. Play into the corner, keep ten. Now for the blade, 16 seconds left. Kansas City center one, handy a shot. And the goaltender, Sharples, I believe, gets a piece of it. And he doesn't have too many fine words, I don't think, for some of his teammates in front. So they allowed the blades to work right in on goal with 10 seconds left in this uh, hockey game. Scott Sharples uh, in for the remainder of this contest. Hey, he, he really hasn't played that bad uh, when he came into the game. Only one goal getting past him, and that was off of Darrell Olson's stick. Uh, really didn't have much of a chance on it. He came up with some big saves. Well, uh, Kevin Constantine hoping his team uh, can turn it around and win the Huber Trophy. They have gone two and seven in their last nine coming into the game tonight, but handily winning this one and going on to win their 51st of the year here in 10 more seconds. Eagles gain possession. Workman out of his own end. Salt Lake shorthanded. The lead pass to Young. Five seconds left. Young now twirling around, and that's going to 
end this game. And Kansas City skate out of here with a 6-1 win. They, for the moment, are uh, back close towards the first place spot overall in the IHL. Eagles now only a single point ahead of Indianapolis. Well, a very tough game for the Golden Eagles. Everybody out to uh, give Arthur Irby a tap on the pads and a helmet. He played a great hockey game here tonight. Mike, uh, Eagles getting outshot uh, rather bad tonight, but... Arthur Irby came up with a couple of big saves. One got by him, but another excellent job by him. Well, the final score here tonight at the Delta Center before 7,442, 6 to 1, Kansas City. Well, we'll come back with a wrap up here in just a moment. This is Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey. Not great news from the Delta Center. The Kansas City Blades win their 51st of the year. They trounce Salt Lake by a score of 6-1. I'm Mike Barak alongside former Golden Eagle Randy Busick. And Randy, a tough night to, from start to finish. It was 3-1 after 1, and the Blades went from there. Well, there re really wasn't too many positives to take out of tonight's game. You really want to forget everything, come back Tuesday night, and hopefully have a better effort. We're going to take a look at some of the statistics from tonight's game, the Paw Computer final summary here tonight. There you see Kansas City out shooting the Salt Lake Golden Eagles 34 to 20, and that really indicative of how the play went. They really carried it throughout the game, did a great job of forcing the Golden Eagles defensemen, getting some great shots against the goaltenders. Mazzotti ultimately getting pulled. Scott Sharples going in, but the final score, 6 to 1 here tonight. Well, the Golden Eagles dropped the game here this evening. They're only a single point ahead of the Indianapolis Ice. They defeated the Milwaukee Admirals, but the Eagles uh, in this game, it was 5 to 1. We'll take a look at the final goal of this game in a Came against Scott Sharples. I guess we won't. The Eagles are dropping here tonight, but we will take a look at something that took place tonight. Fans enjoying some of the scraps here this evening at the Delta Center. Well, definitely a very physical contest. Uh, this was uh, the norm tonight. There are a lot of penalties uh, whistled down by Don Adams. Here, Richard Zanlack uh, flailing away, and we saw a lot, a lot of fights tonight, Mike. We saw Kerry Clark uh, going for Salt Lake, and. Uh, there he goes with a Kansas City player, Kevin Evans, and that was a pretty good one as he was able to get that left uh, hand free. And really was uh, that kind of a game here this evening. The Eagles uh, uh, won, as we talked about, uh, the physical end of things perhaps. But as far as the scoreboard is concerned, Kansas City showed why they have 51 wins this year. Well, that's exactly right, Mike. Uh, the Golden Eagles quite frustrated tonight, and I think that showed in the fisticuffs end of the things. But definitely Kansas City has a A1 team, and they're going to be very tough come playoff time. Well, right now the Golden Eagles uh, fighting for a playoff spot. Indianapolis winning four to nothing. Uh, the Eagles have only a total of six games left in the regular season. Boy, that really makes things tough too, Mike. The Eagles really have their work cut out for them now. They've got to play superb hockey from here on in. Hopefully, come up with some big wins and uh, Ray LeBlanc and the, the Indianapolis Ice falter a little bit. Yeah, they're on a roll with the goaltender Indianapolis Ice, uh, Ray LeBlanc, who's played very well. Randy, again, thank you very much, and uh, we hope to bring another broadcast along to the fans, either before it's uh, all over in the regular season or one in the playoffs. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Thanks, Randy. Uh, I'm Mike Barak. Again, the final score here tonight, the Kansas City Blades 6 and the Salt Lake Golden Eagles 1. Hope you enjoyed it tonight, and uh, good night, everybody. Thank you.